Hi, welcome. Thanks for joining me. On this episode of Build Drone, we're going to build, price, and option the 2019 Porsche 911 Carrera 4, that's four-wheel drive, GTS. Before we do that, I just want to remind you that if you find this build and price review helpful, informative, entertaining, please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. I'd really appreciate it. Okay, so you can see right here, the scroller's been going by. These GTS models start at 120000 uh, their horsepower is 450, and they do the 0 to 60 with the Sport Chrono package in 3.9 seconds. All right, so here are the models. So you have the Carrera 4 GTS. That's the one that we are going to be looking at today. That's $127,600 out the door, well, for starters, out the door. Then you have the Carrera 4 GTS, which is just a convertible. And then you have the Targa, right? You have the 911 Targa 4 GTS. There, I think there's one more behind the one that we're looking at. Well, it's this one. Right. Then we just have the base, the two-wheel drive convertible version, and then the two-wheel drive hardtop uh, version. So I don't know. Well, I guess we can figure that out, but that's where we're at as far as what trim levels are available in the GTS. So two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, and then a Targa top, basically. All right. So there we go, rear wheel drive. Oh, let's go click on ours so that way it gives us the right data. There we go. All right, so we've got some photos. We'll come back and look at those photos in a minute. Before we talk about these technical specs, I do have some pros and cons that I want to go over real fast. I guess while you're looking at that, I'll tell you about the pros and cons. The pros are impeccable, impeccable handling inspires driver confidence. That's not surprising. Powerful and surprisingly economical engines. That's not necessarily surprising either, seeing that they've changed the way their engines are now, right? Uh, premium interior with lots of customization possib uh, possibility, and that's always a case with Porsches. As a matter of fact, I was just doing the new uh, Porsche Macan, and I'll put a link up to the turbo version that I priced out to easily the cost of, say, I don't know, a BMW M5. So I'm going to put a link up to that, and you should check that video out. So to take because Porsche takes customization to a whole nother level, right? A whole nother level. So I mean, you could take a fifty thousand, you could pay, you could take a fifty-five thousand dollar car and add seventy thousand dollar worth of options to it. That's a lot of options. So that said, the cars are surprisingly comfortable and practical for daily driving. Now, some of the cons are the engines lack some of the response and audible thrill of the old ones, right? Because aren't they four-cylinder engines now instead of six? We'll double-check that in the specs. Um, the infotainment systems have a few quirks, all right? That was some information I've dug up from some notable sources. Here's why I recommend the GTS. With so many versions available, and there are a lot of versions of 911s available, Many of them with overlapping price windows. The question is, you know, which one do you get, right? Knowing the answer will get you a long way towards picking the ideal 911. I think the GTS is a can't-miss proposition, whether it's a 911 GTS or a, I don't know, Porsche Panamera GTS. What I like about the GTS is that it's got more power than the regular than the regular Carrera. The, the GTS always has more power than the base model uh, Porsche, all right. But it's all, but it's not so, and it gets all like the sporty bits on it. But it's not so extreme that it doesn't make sense for daily driving, right? You know, a GT3 RS. Yeah, that sounds really great. It's not your, it's not going to be a good daily driver. So I think the GTS gives you all the sport that you might want because you're looking for a Porsche anyway. But some, I don't know, some degree of practicality, I guess, if you will. All right, so you've been looking at the specs here while I've been telling you about the pros, the cons, and why I think the GTS is the model to go with. You can see that if you get this with the PDK, it's going to bump the price up to $131,000. The track speed, even though it seems to go, to go down one mile an hour, it's negligible. The combined uh, EPR gas mileage goes up one mile per gallon, but again, that's negligible as far as I'm concerned. I think the biggest deal is the 0 to 60 with the Sport Chrono package. I mean, you got four tenths of a second here. The PDK has got on the on the manual. I mean, if that doesn't tell you that manuals are dead, then the only reason you get a manual transmission is because you just enjoy that. Then I don't know what else was going to tell you that. All right, so we got a height of fifty point six inches, wheelbase ninety six point five, 
and an overall length of 178.3. So just under 180. It's not a very big car. It's wide, but not very big. All right, so colors. Lots of colors. They don't tell you the colors until you get over to the build. So we won't see the color names until we get over to the build and price, which we will after we get through this page. So you can see all the standard colors, and we'll go through all those here in, in just a few. Let's look through these photos. I really like the side view. I really love the new shape. You know, obviously the 911 shape has been around forever, but the subtleties of where the body's at now, the shape of the body now is just really, really, really good looking. I really like this car. It's a nice car. All right. Uh, notable features for the GTS. It's got that 3-liter twin-turbo six-cylinder engine, 450 horse, 405 pound-feet of torque. When we get over to the specs, because I'm wondering... When exactly is it putting down that power, right? Or at what RPMs is it putting down the power? What RPMs is it making this max uh, torque? So we're going to find that out. Uh, Seven-speed manual transmission. you got to pay extra, of course, for that PDK. you got the center lock 20-inch 911 Turbo S wheels painted in satin black. What do they mean by that when they say center lock? Well, you know how um, back in the day, well, you're not even back in the day, currently most cars have lug nuts. So you want to take the wheel off your car, you've got to take off... You know, either five, well, depending on the car. I don't think they do four lug nuts anymore, but back in the day, it was anywhere from between four and probably six lug nuts for a standard vehicle. With the with a race car, they have one nut in the center, right? Because when they go to change a car, the tires at a pit stop, that makes it faster. Well, unless you're in stock car, uh, NASCAR. But so that's what this is. It's got a center style lock that's really just one nut that holds the wheel on as, a pair, as opposed to a bunch of lug nuts. Um, then we have the six-piston monoblock aluminum fixed uh, fixed brake calipers at front, four-piston units at the rear. Discs are internally ventilated and cross-drilled calipers, and they're in red. You got the PASM Sport Suspension. That's like the Porsche Active Suspension Management or something like that, or Porsche Stability Management or Porsche Active Stability Management, uh, plus the torque vectoring. Torque vectoring like allows... The computer can control the wheel speed of the different of different wheels, so that way it can help the car get around corners better. And mm, I don't know. I always say help these cars defy gravity, meaning do things that they normally might not be able to do without the help of that torque vectoring. All right. So then you have the PCM, which is a Porsche communication management that includes online navigation and mobile phone preparation. It'd be nice if they had a photo or something, a clickable link. Um, Connect Plus, that's uh, their online navigation. That gives you the Apple CarPlay. They don't say anything about Android Auto. Uh, telephone module and wireless internet access. Okay, here we go. Here's some features, a lot of features. So under the drive, we've got what? ID, IDEA 911. Uh, then we have performance. Uh, well, let's take a look at these. There's not too much information. All right, the voice is in our head that spurs us on. Do keep in mind that I won't read all this information. If you want to make sure that you catch all this information, simply pause the video. Because what I'm really going to do is probably hit the highlights and we'll just kind of scroll on through. Because we, we've got a scroller over here. So I bet we might be able to scroll through all the drive and maybe scroll through all these ribbons. And if we can, then we will. All right. So uh, it's just kind of giving us some, uh, some information here. There's our 450 horse and our 405 pound-feet of torque. And like I was saying... The GTS models always come with a little more juice. This one has 30 more horsepower and 37 more pound-feet of torque compared to the base or to the 911S, which is even upgraded from the regular 911. All right, pretty cool. Under performance, all right, here we go. We've got some numbers. The horsepower is made at 6,500 RPM, and that torque Comes is a mate. The max torque starts at 2150 and that is held all the way up to 5000 RPM. I think it, I love to see that torque down at around 1700 RPMs, but it probably feels fantastic. So that's cool. It's got a direct fuel injection, Vario Cam Plus, uh, with the optional PDK and launch control. You can get this thing down to zero to 60 in 3.5 seconds. Top track speed 192. All right. What else do they have down here? Uh, another burst of adrenaline is triggered by the legendary sound of the boxer engine. With the Sport or Sport Plus button selected, it's enough to raise goosebumps even when the engine is idling. 
And then down here they go into talking about their turbochargers and the construct the construction and configuration of their turbochargers. Um, it looks like something about boost pressure, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and something about your adrenal system. <laughs> All right, so let's move on. Where should we go? All right, sport exhaust system. Is that going to be optional, or is that come probably standard on the GTS? With the sport exhaust system, the new 911 GTS models also set new standards for sound. Two catalytic converters and a rear muffler lead into two centrally positioned tailpipes with a black high gloss finish. All right, cool. Um, all right, can this is this going to jump over to the other rhythm now or ribbon I should say? Yeah. Well, let's close it. So under chassis. Force traction management. All right, so under drive. Okay, so transmission was the last one under drive. I'm just kind of seeing how that's working. All right, so it's got the seven-speed manual transmission, or you can get the seven-speed PDK transmission. That's the deal with that. All right, and that answer my, answers my question. No, we cannot click the arrow to jump over to the other category. So I'll click that category. And force traction management. What does this do? Porsche track, Traction Management, the active all-wheel drive system, helps to ensure that the distribution of drive force is purposely adapted to all kinds of road and weather conditions. Electronically controlled, fully variable multi-plate clutch distributes drive force between the permanently driven rear wheels and the front axle. Okay, we got that. That's cool. Porsche Traction Management, PTM. Then PASM, Porsche Active Suspension. Okay, I didn't have it right, I don't think, anyway. So this is an electronic damping control system. Continually adjust the damping force on each wheel. Okay, it's not unlike the magnetic ride control or any of the other really high, sophisticated suspension systems that are basically reading the road and stuff like that. Not to take apart, not to take away from Porsches, not to not to take out their fire or anything. I'm just what I'm kind of moving along and just let you know that that's just kind of. Standard technology now for a lot of high-performance cars now. They, they they just have that really great suspension. So we're going to kind of drift through that. Rear axle steering. I don't know how I feel about that. Is that an option? Can we not have that? I mean, I'm sure it's superior in every way. I'm just not really there yet. All right, so rear axle steering is available. Okay, it's not, a, it's not standard. It's an option. Uh, on request to provide even greater performance in everyday practicality. Now, I can see how that can help you driving in the city and help you with parking because it's going to definitely decrease the turning radius in the car. I just don't think I like the fact that the back wheels would be turning. I know Cadillac does that on the new CT6 uh, and all that. So that's pretty cool stuff. I just don't know if I'm ready for it. Okay, then next we have what? Porsche Dynamic Chassis Control, PDCC. Optional on the GTS in conjunction with rear axle steering. So you've got to first select rear axle steering if you're going to get Porsche Dynamic Chassis Control, apparently, is an active roll stabilization that suppresses lateral body movement during cornering. That is a mouthful. Cornering maneuvers. In addition, it minimizes the lateral instability of the vehicle on uneven ground. Well, just fix that. Then we won't have to worry about this. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right. So uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, it sets standards for driving performance. Yeah. Why wouldn't it? Because it's like making you a better driver. I'm sure it does set standards. Um, let's see, Sport Chrono Package. Yes, I need to know more about the Sport Chrono Package. What is it? And it's a lot of information, too. The Sport Chrono Package enables an even sportier tuning of the chassis, engine, and transmission and launches you to unprecedented sporty heights. So you will be sporty, Spice. The key component is the mode switch on the steering wheel derived from the 918 Spider. Without your hand having to leave the steering wheel, you can choose any of four settings, normal, sport, sport plus, and individual, which means you can probably set it up how you want it. In this way, you can adapt the vehicle even more to the way, yeah, the, the way you want to drive. Now, when you get this with the PDK, you benefit from three additional functions. The first is launch control, which can be used to achieve the best possible standing start. The second function is the motorsport-derived gear shift strategy. I didn't realize that the Chrono Package did all of this at all. In this mode, PDK is geared up for an extremely short shift times and optimum shift points for the maximum acceleration possible. See, Porsche, they cost a fortune, apparently. But, I mean, look at that tech. You know this car throws down, I mean, as long as this stuff works, right? It throws down. 
The third function is sport response. Pressing the button in the center of this mode switch primes the engine and transmission for the fastest possible unleashing of power. In other words, maximum responsiveness for a period of 20 seconds, right? So you're going to get super sporty spice for 20 seconds, right? Now, dynamic engine mounts are also part of the Sport Chrono package. I actually need to read all of this. The electronically controlled system minimizes the perceptible oscillations and vibrations of the entire drivetrain particularly the engine, and combines the benefits of a hard or soft engine mount mounting arrangement. In short, it enhances both driving stability and driving comfort. Why did you just say that? The Sport Chrono package now also includes the Porsche Track Precision app. Now, what is this? <clears throat> this enables you to clock lap times and collate driving stats, uh, record and manage the results on your smartphone, and share them with, o- with other drivers, uh, or you mean upload it to Facebook to show your to show your friends. Uh, the app makes use of GPS and high precision data. Da, 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 da. All right, that's pretty cool. The Sport Chrono package is tight. Don't know how much it costs. We're getting it on ours though. I'll tell you that much for sure. Wow, the chassis, poor stability management, PSM, automatically maintains stability even at the limits of dynamic driving performance. That means when the car is about to spin butt over butt, right, start turning around in circles, this thing might save your life. That's what that's probably saying. In the new 911 GTS models, the upgraded version of this is supplemented by a sport mode. It allows a significantly more sporty driving style. That means you could probably break the tires loose. You could probably drift a little bit more without it acting, without without it pulling you back in line. People were probably complaining about that, and so they probably put the, the sport mode in there to shut people up. And then you have the Porsche Torque Vectoring. We were talking about that earlier. They call that PTV, right? And it's standard on the PDK. And it operates in junction with the rear differential lock, and they work by intelligently breaking the rear wheels as the situation demands. So as things get hairy, then this thing's going to start saying, okay, I'm going to slow down this wheel a little bit, or just to control the car from probably making it oversteer to prevent that back end from sliding out, probably. All right, when the car is driven assertively into a corner or maybe too hot, moderate brake pressure is applied to the inside rear wheel. This induces an additional rotational pulse, yaw, around the vehicle's vertical axis, which results in a direct and sporty steering action from a turn in point. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and I guess I should finish those last two paragraphs, shouldn't I? I guess. Hopefully, we won't see another one this long. All right, so da 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 da. I don't think we need to go over all that. Front axle lift system. Let's let's learn about this. So this will pick the front of the car up by 1.5 inches, so you can clear things, and it'll do this up to 37 miles an hour. All right, cool. Uh, we went through all of those. Let's go over to safety. What do we got for the brakes? Uh, we got the carbon ceramic option. I'm not going to read all that. You want to get that in? Go ahead and pause the video really fast. The carbon ceramics, as far as I'm concerned, I don't think you need it. Unless you're going to go out and track this $150,000 car, which most people don't even have the skill set to really do. Even if you go do it, you're not going to be doing it in such a way that you need to spend the money on the carbon ceramics. And just Unless you just want to get the carbon ceramic brakes to say that you have the carbon ceramic brakes because they look good. Uh, but the steel pistons have been, or the steel calipers have been proven time and time again to be more than adequate on the street. Um, then you have the lights. What do we have? Bi Xenon headlights, including Porsche Dynamic Light System. Uh, fitted as standard, these things are. And then what? Then you have the LED headlights in black, including the Dynamic Light System. All right. So this is a special feature, high beam function, camera detects the lights, right? I don't know what we're going to do with that. I'm not necessarily looking to build the most expensive GTS. Nor am I looking to build a budget GTS. I'm simply going to build a GTS with the parts that I want on it. Then I don't really know if I want those headlights. It's not really a matter of the cost. I just don't know if I need and or want those. Um, under accessories, um, they've got, uh, let's take a look here. They've got quite a bit of stuff. They've got, they've got wheels. They've got wider. Let's see. The rear end is even more muscular. Hang on one second. Okay, so they're talking about all the wheels here, and then these wider wheels in the back, and then they've got what they've got some 
uh, LED tail. They've got an LED light strip, and then they they got an eye catching feature on the GTS models. The accent trim between the tinted tail lights. So that would be this accent trim that's maybe up here. They said between the tinted tail lights, which would be here. This accent trim would be probably that piece there. And I guess they do that in LED. So all right, that's cool. Um, interior. They've got some other things, right? We will kind of maybe look at accessories in a little bit, right? I'm not usually the thing with accessories is that's by taste, and I usually don't spend any time going through accessories, right? I just don't really. And you could always go back to the dealer to pick that stuff up at any time. So this building price is usually about stuff that you can't retrofit later, right? So here's the Sound Package Plus uh, with eight loudspeakers and a total of 150 watts, deliver excellent sound. The amplifier integrated into Porsche communication management optimally adapts the acoustic pattern in the vehicle. Right. What do we have next? The Bose. Okay. So then you go from eight speakers to 12 speakers, 100 watts. You get 550 watts uh, of total power. The Bose is going to be obviously a sweet upgrade. And then you've got the Burmester. The Burmester, what? They still, how many uh, speakers do you get with the Burmester? Let's find out. Uh, 12 speakers. 821 watts, got a big subwoofer. Obviously, the Burmester is going to be the best of the bunch, but the Burmester is going to set you back. Usually, in these Porsches, they're like around $6,000 and change or more. Uh, on the Under the Porsche Connect, what do we have? The new Porsche Communication Management. Now, let's find out what this is all about. It looks good. The photo looks good. I can see how they've made some nice updates. Uh, it's your central control unit for all your infotainment, all your applications. This I'm probably going to read because I like to get in all the tech. I like to know about all the tech. All right, so um, let's see. Infotainment already starts when you charge your, and connect your phone. Uh, your audio source, da 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 da. So you've got two SD card readers, CD, DVD drive, playback. Um, Obviously, I already said that it has Apple CarPlay. I still don't see anything for uh, Android Auto. Seems like Android Auto is like always left out. If, if one's going to get left out, that's the one that gets left out, seems like. Now, what's Connect Plus? It ensures maximum connectivity in your phone, built-in LTE, uh, SIM, card or SIM card slot. Oh, so it's like, gotcha. And it makes it probably a hotspot, too. Is there a hotspot? Yeah. Uh, yeah, gotcha. That's interesting. But that's probably a service that you're going to probably have to pay for additional, right? I'm sure you will. Um, services. With the Connect Plus module, you have access to a range of helpful Porsche connected services. For example, real-time traffic um, and all that there. Everybody pretty much does that these days, not to knock them down. Then they have their suite of connected apps, of course. Um, you got that there. And then under personalization... Uh, you got the tech equipment that's like their, you know, their accessories and stuff like that. That looks pretty hot, doesn't it? Here's a Targa being shown, uh, our wealth of experience, and we won't get into any of that. I think, let's go through a couple of photos really fast, but I think we're going to be, there's the nice shot of the center lock wheel there. There's carbon ceramic brakes we were talking about. Um, there's a red face dial. I love the red face dial stuff. I'll probably pop the money for a red or a yellow gauge face. There's the Burmester. You can see the Burmester on this one. This one has the Sport Chrono package because you can see the Sport Chrono button. Because they were talking about the center button in the middle. And there it is. Um, yeah. Yeah. Looks good. Looks good. Looks good. Looks good. All right, you ready for the building price? Yeah, me too. All right, so here we are. We're on the building price now. Let me go through and get a better angle. I like this angle when I'm trying to pick color. So standard color is this, I guess, Carrera white. You've got the standard black. Guards red. Whoa, guards red. Hang on. That guards red just didn't want to act right. <laughs> All right, then we've got the yellow, racing yellow. Oh, here's the Carrera white. Sorry about that. I don't know why that's showing that on those. Ah, problem solved. I just changed the image angle. There we go. Uh, here's the agate, agate gray metallic. Here's the GT silver. Now let's go back and look at these other colors where the where it was breaking up. There's the red. That was breaking up. There's the black. And there's the white. Now did we go through all these? There's the jet black. There's the Carrera white. Uh, night blue metallic. We did do that. What's the special? Carmine red. Then we have the chalk. I'm, I'm really feeling the chalk. 
I've already done one in chalk, I think. Uh, what was that one called? Oh, Lava Orange and then Miami Blue. Miami Blue. Uh, let's do the chalk. I want to do chalk. And for wheels... Oh, wait, we can hear exhaust sounds. Should we do exhaust sounds? I think so. Let's check an exhaust clip really fast. Can you hear that? That's what your $131,000 is going to get you right there. And then he takes off up the road. Okay. Done. Okay, cool. Let's get this side angle here because what do we have? The 20-inch 911 Turbo S wheels. And then what's this? The 20-inch Carrera S wheels. I don't know, man. I think maybe I like the Carrera S. Well, let me just go back and see if we can get a better angle. See if we can get a better angle. Not really because the wheels are just too dang dark. I think I like the Carrera S wheels. I think I like the more open-spoke design. I think I'm feeling that, actually. Do we need any wheel accessories? Uh, wheel face painted in exterior color. No. Exterior colors. Uh, or, I'm sorry. Interior colors and materials. Standard interior with Alcantara, Alcantara, or leather seats. So what is this one? Standard interior in black leather with Alcantara with leather seat centers. We're going to stick with the Alcantara. I've often said I don't know how it's going to wear, da, 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 da. But we're in the 911 Carrera 4 GTS. I'm going all sport. Now, what's this deal here? Leather and Alcantara interior and Carmine Red, da, 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 da. Now, to do this, the following option will be added. The GTS interior package. So we're going to add $8,000 in options just to get this red here, basically. I want the red. That's what this is all about. Okay, I guess I should have said that going in. So it's going to cost $8,000 to get a couple pieces of red in the car. All right. So it looks like it turned all the stitching red, and I have the red gauge. I was thinking I was going to get a little bit more, but you know what? I'll leave it because, yeah, I was just thinking a little more red was going to show up, but that's fine. Um, now, unless you want to do full leather seats, now I'm going to just click this for giggles. I don't, I don't, we're not going to do that. I just want to check it out really fast. Uh, no, that, that just makes it like a regular 911 then, doesn't it? It does. So let me put this back. We have to get that GTS interior package again. Da, 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 da. And okay, now we're back in the mix. Okay, let's close interior colors and materials. Let's get out of there. Now, what seats do we have? We have the Sport Plus seats. or Yeah, Sport Seats Plus. We have those. But do we want the adaptive sport seats with the memory? I, I see somebody's nodding their head, so yes. <clears throat> we're going to do that. Then, what do we have? Oh, then we're going to go down to options. This is where it's going to get tasty. <laughs> this is where you have that infinite customization, and you can really do some damage. <clears throat> all right, let's see. Packages. Premium Package Plus. Uh, all right. Anything that's messing with seats, we're not going to mess with the seats. I like the seats the way they are it's because the stuff gets confusing. So I'm not messing with that. Um, exterior, deletion of model logo. Nope. 911 Career 4 logo, change to 911. Really? You can change all of that to just 911. Huh. So you want your car to not be known what it is. Porsche logo painted. No, I don't need all of this. LED headlights in black with Porsche Dynamic. No. Porsche entry and drive, I think I do want. Let's double check what that is. Uh, I think that's the keyless entry, right? That's probably the keyless entry, and, and we're going to want that. They didn't even tell us anything. What was the point of showing that? That's not any more information. Just said, show us a picture. Do I want a rear wiper? I think it's ugly, but do I need it? Probably. There's going to be times I wish I had one. Power folding exterior mirrors? Then if it's no cost option, then make it power folding all the time. Uh, electric slide tilt sunroof? Um, maybe. Oh, and then they offer it in glass. I think I'll do it in glass because then I have the ability to keep it closed, but then open up the screen and let a little light in because I don't, you normally open up the hood or I'm sorry, open up the roof, but I don't know. It might be cool. Uh, sport design package. What does this all include? It includes sport design front fascia, front spoiler and rear spoiler. Okay. Now, that sounds good, provided that it's not going to make me have to remove anything. Let's double check. Let's see. Okay, we're good. 
Um, I'm looking at all these. Some of these I just don't even mention. Side skirts painted. No. Oh, wait. Maybe. 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 Maybe I do want the side skirts painted. Let's see. The side skirts would be right down here. Let's see. Let's go ahead and hit that paint. Yeah. I want that. Rear lid slats painted. No. Maybe I do want some of that. Rear lower fascia painted. That's going to be down here. Yeah. All right, you got to watch some of that stuff. Uh, roof transparent system. Transport system. No, we don't need that. Lower trim of exterior mirrors painted. Lower trim of exterior made it. Because I see where the mirror is like black right there. All right, right there. Let's see. Okay, yeah. All right. Door handles in high gloss black. Now, what would that look like? Oh, they don't even show us. Upper housing and sport design exterior mirrors and carbon fiber. Okay, let's see. What does that look like? Okay, so to do that, we'd have to remove the power folding mirrors and the lower trim on the exterior mirrors painted. Okay, I'm willing to do that. I'm willing to do that. I'm willing to do that. Boom. That works. I'm willing to do that. That's hot. Window triangle trim and carbon fiber. What the heck? Oh, where is that at? Is that, is that here? Window tri Let's see. Let's click the thing. Ah, right there. Yes. Seven hundred and thirty dollars. Yeah, add it to the add it to the kitty. We got it. We got that fuel cap with aluminum finish. Where's the fuel cap go? It's on the other side. Let's see what that would look like. Oh yeah, I'm down. Boom, down. Okay. Uh, under performance, what do we got? We're going with the PDK. Uh, the PDCC with standard PASM and rear axle steering. Nope, don't want the rear axle steering. Front axle lift system. Yep. Standard Porsche active suspension management. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, what's the Porsche steering plus? Is it going to tell us anything? Enables easier steering inputs in low speed corners or when parking. I don't really probably need that. I'm not really sweating all that be honest with you uh rear axles yeah porsche don't want the carbon ceramics on the interior uh adaptive cruise i'm not really i don't care about the adaptive cruise control lane change assist ouch automatically dimming mirrors yes uh light design package what is that all about uh additional dimmable ambient led lighting on overhead console area of door handles door storage compartment rear seats driver and front passenger footwell yeah, let's do that. I like that. Can't have enough light. All right, so we got light. Uh, heated multifunction steering wheel. Nay. Deletion of Alcantara. What? No. Rear footwell lighting. Yes. My people in the back need to see something. Don't step on this good stuff. Or some good bags I might have back there. I might have gone shopping. Seat heating. Yes. Seat ventilation. Yes. Oh, I knew it was going to have to be leather. Then no. Then just give me the heated seats. Smoking pack, no. Luggage net, no. Fire extinguisher, no. Interior trim, painted ink, no. No. Climate control, no. No, this is all just vehicle piece. Instrument dials and guards red. All of them? No, because that's going to change our package. <clears throat> We're going to leave it. I like it the way it is. It's fine. Sport, oh, okay. Uh, let's see. Sport chrono stopwatch dial and guards red. What if I did it in yellow? Is that going to look too stupid if there's... I guess it will. <laughs> All right. How about red? How about red? Let's try red. Okay. It wants to change all that. We're not doing anything because we have a package. We're leaving it. We're at $160,000 anyway. Uh, Seatbelts and red. I'm not worried about that. Whatever the color of the seatbelts are is fine. Uh, leather interior. Nope. We don't have to worry about that. Let's go over to carbon fiber though. The interior trim and carbon fiber with standard interior. Now, I don't think that's going to fly. I didn't think that was going to fly. Yeah, they're going to have to remove that. I don't think we're going to be able to get the carbon unless we did it as a as, unless we did it uh, as a la carte. Heated multifunction steering. Manual gear lever and carbon fiber. PD gauge selector and carbon fiber trim. Okay. Carbon fiber floor mats with leather edging. What does a carbon fiber floor mat look like? No, that's not even cute at all. That's not cute at all. Door sill guards and carbon fiber. Yes. Door sill guards. And, oh, yeah, forget that one. I want it illuminated. Let's do that. 
Uh, carbon fiber floor mats. No, 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 no. Carbon fiber floor mat. No. Manual gear lever. No. Interior trim. Interior trim. Standard interior. That's not going to work, but I'm just going to try really quick. Yeah. No. I just want to double check. We only we can only do this once. I don't want to have to go back or have questions. Uh, audio and communications. We're skipping over the aluminum stuff. I don't like any of that or the Alcan, you know. Uh, audio and communications. Voice control. Yeah. Give me the Burmester, man. Forget it. Give me the Burmester. We're already into this thing. A grip. Give me the Burmester. Going to be happy. All right. Uh, delivery experience. We're not doing that. Uh, you can get pick it up in Zuffenhausen or Leipzig. Uh, but no, we're not going to do any of that. We're going to go ahead and wrap this up is what we're going to do. Let's go over to the summary. And I'm going to download this build. I'm going to download this build summary. I'm going to put a link in the description below. So if you like the way I built out this 911 Carrera 4 GTS, and you should, I'm going to put a link in the description below. All right, so this thing started out at 127600 We racked up almost $40,000 in, in, in equipment. Plus our delivery charge or processing and handling and all that, we're looking at $167,630. It's not as much money as I thought, but it's not cheap. So if you made it to the end of this, I really appreciate it. What do you think about the 911 GTS Career 4? I like it. I like it a lot. You have a great day. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate it. I'm going to keep turning out more great content for you. Please keep watching. Please keep sharing and subscribing and uh, enjoying the content. I really appreciate it.